So, it has been quite the three months. For those of you who have been here following along, uh, we have an opportunity to tell Leah our stories. And for those of you who are visiting with us today or who haven't been here in a while, you're invited to hear what's been going on. It has certainly been three months full of Lent and spiritual practices and all kinds of other stuff happening in the life of our church. So, I invite your stories, and I'll come run around the mic so that Leah can hear what all has been happening from you, not from me, but from you. So does anyone have a story they want to share? It can be like a short story or like a beginning, middle, end story, you know, whatever feels comfortable. Yeah, David. So in the first spiritual practice, uh, we had the opportunity to go downstairs and do yoga, right? And uh, it, was, it was a great turnout, first of all. And um, my girls were there and we were doing stuff. And, and, but for me, what stuck out was, and has stuck with me, is um, the, the guest that was teaching us talked about having our, raising our chin or whatever, but, and I wasn't quite getting what she meant because she was like, no, no, you know, kept, and she's like, pretend God, think about God holding the nape of your neck like a little kitten and lift yourself up. And so I just picture God, I think about my stature and I think about God pulling me the, by the nape of my neck to give me better posture. Oh, thanks, David. Other stories? Yeah. <laughs> this is a sort of a repeat of what I said a couple months ago. I guess it's been already. But first of all, kudos to Leah and the worship committee for planning uh, for your absence and bringing in such great guest speakers. Um, they were really good. Oh, I missed one. I'm sorry. It was snowy weather. But anyway, uh, Rachel, who came to do the yoga workshop that David just talked about, I saw her blog the day or two before she came, and I saw that she teaches yoga two blocks from my house. And to me, this was one of those moments of synchronicity where I just felt like this wonderful gift had been dropped right in my lap. And I started going, and I've been going ever since. And at the same time, I started meditating, um, just in an attempt to try to be more present with life and everything it throws at me, whether it's good or bad or painful or joyful. And um, then a few, what, four weeks, six weeks later, uh, Barb England came to do a uh, creative, like a visual journaling type of workshop. And then one day sitting in my yoga practice, suddenly it was full of color. And I got out my visual journal and I drew a little thing that was sort of a display of what that meditation practice that day was like for me. I will have to say that's the first time my meditation practice has actually felt like meditation and not trying really hard not to fall asleep. But <laughs> it is a start. Right. And so that is what I got from, your, uh, from this sabbatical time, I guess, for all of us and from the practices that we learned about. Cool. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> Thanks, others. We've had spiritual practices, we've had Lent, we've had Holy Week. Yeah, Karen. Uh, this will be a little different take. Um, I feel like I speak for many of us when I feel, say, I feel like I've known Emily for a long, long time because she has been part of your, Leah, Pastor Leah's spiritual family um, and journey. And it, I am just impressed by the beauty and the, the flow of Leah's love, Emily's love, God's love, our love. There was nothing abrupt. There was nothing um, that of a feeling of abandonment or what's this new thing. And that's extraordinary for a life of a church. So someone used the word kudos. I'll say kudos to you, to you kudos to us. Um, you got to come back and visit. But meanwhile, it just feels so like a flow. Now Leah's back. And I, I'm glad for our children, and I'm glad for us. That was really beautiful, guys. So 
Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Others. Oh, come on. <laughs> guys. I got to exp experience Holy Week really for the first time because I've never been one who attends church regularly. Um, and since coming here and finding a spiritual home, I've really uh, embraced the fact that I identify as a Christian, which is huge for me. Yeah, thanks. Others, stories, revelations, thanks. Um, so I attend Community Underground regularly, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, by the way. <laughs> and a um, few of us in here. And one of the things that, that was a little scary, but, but I appreciated, is Emily came in and tried some new things with us as a way to enhance our own spiritual practice. And um, uh, change isn't always bad, I've learned. And I really <laughs> I liked some of the things that we were doing with her. Others. We, uh, my husband and I, began coming here right before Thanksgiving, I think it was. And um, then Emily, or I'm sorry, Leah, pulled her stunt and left. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we left our church, uh, or I left my church of first orientation about 17 years ago, and really didn't think there was a hope to find God again. And uh, I have to say, the unexpected has happened, and for me. And uh, your service last week, was that last week? The unexpected service where it was crazy. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was probably one of the things that uh, uh, touched me the most is that we can expect the unexpected. And uh, I have grown. I feel like it's been longer than, than Thanksgiving. And uh, we love you guys. And uh, uh, I'm so happy to be in a place where we feel accepted. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Martha. Can we pass that down? Thanks, Laura. On the same order, on the mix-up Sunday, I guess you'd call it that, uh, Chris Tibetz, who works for the Retired Ministers Fund in New York City, was my guest for the weekend. And she came to the service, and she asked me afterwards what I thought about the way Emily conducted our church service. And at first I thought, well, we have a lot of windy people in our congregation, and it could go on forever. <laughs> and then I thought, well, it's different. Do I have the same feelings about church? Well, yes and no. So we discussed this after over lunch, and Krista said, but you know, she really pulled it off. You better. <laughs> You better go and tell her that after we talked about it, I agreed. It all flowed together in an unusual way, but it still had a message, and it was wonderful. So you have produced from Krista and me, and I'm proud to say that I got to know both you and your partner very well, I think, and I've enjoyed your company. Thanks, so thank you. Thanks. For context, the crazy mix-up Sunday, we cut up, we didn't have bulletins, and we cut up all the bulletin pieces into strips, and we drew them out of a singing bowl. So if you want organized chaos, that's how to do it. <laughs> Anyone else? Other stories? Moments of realization? So I will offer a bit of an outsider's perspective. I don't have a before and after picture or anything, but my experience for the last three months in this church has been, well, I'll say that it has offered me a new, maybe reinvigorated understanding of the possibilities that exist within churches and church families. Um, 
Emily had a wonderful church that we were at for the last two years that she worked at, um, but it was Northern California and the vibe was a little bit different. So existing in a, a Midwestern church family has, <laughs> has been incredible. This is probably the most welcoming community I've ever experienced. And so to, to be able to experience that during Holy Week, week during Lent, um, coming into a new family knowing nobody and having everybody be incredibly welcoming was, it was an amazing three months. And not just socially, but spiritually for me as well to be able to experience church in this way. So I appreciate everybody's welcoming attitudes and, and it's been a wonderful journey for the last three months. So thank you. Thanks. Any other stories? Now's your chance. Anybody going once? Going twice? If not, I have some things to say. So, okay, great. Yeah. Um, so, so there are going to be a couple of chances for me to tell you stories of my sabbatical over the coming months. I have a lot of pictures to show you from the trip I took um, and lots of stories that relate to these three spiritual practices to share. But the thing that surprised me that happened this week um, is to think about building community and how community changes over time, and the ways in which our relationships um, change. And I've been sort of thinking about and waiting for the moment when this person who was a junior in high school when I met her would become my colleague instead of this high school kid who was then a college kid and she, I was her mentor. I'm talking about her, by the way. I'm not just like motioning over here. Um, and I've been waiting for that moment to happen uh, because Emily discerned a call to ministry when you were a junior in high school, 17. After youth group one night, we're praying, all the rest of the kids leave. Emily's like, I think, I think I'm called by God. I think. <laughs> I think you asked the question. Did I? Yeah. I was talking about our mission trip experience to Kentucky and having this really like profound moment of like, I need to help people. Oh my gosh. And then you said, do you think you might be called into the ministry? <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> and I'm like, are you sure about that? Because I, Really? And then, and then we ended up talking about it and praying about that. And Emily got in trouble for getting home way too late because we were at church for a long time. So, you know, I've been waiting as, as she's grown and gone to school and done all of these things for that shift to happen from being, from being somebody's... Um, like, from being somebody's mentor when, when, when clearly like they're in a learning place, to being somebody's mentor, but you're also their colleague. And this week, she and I met um, for lunch, and she handed off a bunch of stuff to me and gave me a big report about, um, about the three months and things I needed to be aware of and that kind of thing. And as I was leaving lunch, I was like, oh, the shift happened. <laughs> Um, and I have a colleague now instead of, um, instead of just a mentor, mentee. And that was a fascinating thing to experience. Um, and the way in which God moves through our community. We can't force those things to happen, but the way in which we grow and change and when we're open to those things, um, they happen. So that was a fascinating learning for me. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I don't need it. No, you should stay there. So, one of the uh, one of the things that CLB and I talked about, the Church Life Board and I talked about, was bringing some closing words um, for me to share with you about our time together, about our ministry together, and in front of Leah so that Leah can hear all of what's been going on. So I invite you to hear these words. It has been a blessing to do ministry. Let's try this. It has been a blessing 
to do ministry with this community for the last three months. I can hardly believe it's over. I have come to appreciate the ways you all work with one another, committed to gospel values, seeking to become who God is calling you to be in the world. What a privilege it has been to bear witness to your transformation, individually and communally, as we have traveled through Lent into the depths of Holy Week, on to Easter and beyond, exploring spiritual practices in many different ways. As a community, we hosted three guest speakers and teachers who ushered us into these spiritual practices. We, on, we practiced honoring our bodies through yoga, building community by envisioning what CUCC could look like, and engaged our creative spirits by exposing ourselves to various ways of praying in color. And in the midst of all of this spiritual exploration, we managed the following list of things. We experienced and debriefed the unexpected confrontation from Leah's last service. We learned a lot and have begun developing a safety plan. We blessed Jan Wilson and sent her to be with her family in Minnesota. We blessed Ruth Gilbert into her ministry as a court-appointed special advocate. We passed the mantle of lay leadership and carried out our annual leadership retreat. We roasted and toasted Sebastian's life. We watched the kids follow Jesus throughout the sanctuary, learning who he was and is. We affirmed Linda Morgan's call to commissioned ministry as a faith community nurse. We hosted 40-plus college students from Minnesota State University on their service trip. We blessed, we blessed Yaritza as she left our community for her next stage of her life journey. We began ongoing work with the canteen run, providing food for those in need. We celebrated the life and legacy of our beloved Ralph Fisher. We commissioned the campus ministry students into their breakaway trip and welcomed them back, participating in their self-designed and led worship service. We participated in crop walk and springside dinners. Take a deep breath. By the grace of God and the love of this community, we have done a lot over these last three months. You are a community whose love continues to be made known inside and outside these walls. You are a community whose search for God continues to transform and surprise you. You are a community invested in your people and the wider Champaign-Urbana area. You are a community who cares for its sick, homebound, and struggling. You are a community who is learning what it means to let your guard down and be vulnerable with one another. You are a community who is willing to rethink what service and justice really looks like. You are a community committed to the beauty of art in worship. You are a community whose willingness to go with the flow is ever evolving. You are a community who is not afraid to confront your own beliefs as you wrestle with scripture, learn from each other, and practice God's love in the world. You are Community United Church of Christ. And I am proud to have been your sabbatical pastor for the last three months. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me with this work. I have changed and grown because of our time together. And I know you have too. Amen. Thanks.